evening, everyone. It is Tuesday, March 5th at 4.10 p.m. for a special meeting on the McKenzie House and discussion thereof. That's what I figured. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's perfect. Okay. Opening statement, please. Opening statement. Let the minutes reflect that adequate notice of the holding of this special meeting of the Howell Township Council was provided for in the following manner. By the posting of a copy of said notice upon the bulletin board in the Township Municipal Building on February 21st, 2019. By, this, by sending a copy of said notice to the Tritown News, Asbury Park Press, and Star Ledger for information and publication on February 21st, 2019. By the filing of a copy of said form of notice in the Township Clerk's Office on February 21st, 2019. The public will be allowed to attend and will be allowed to participate pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Law. The public is reminded that civility and decorum will be maintained during the meeting. Any contracts awarded at this meeting or between now and the next meeting will be required to comply with the requirements of Public Law 1975, Chapter 127, NJAC 17, colon 27. In accordance with the Fire Prevention Code, be advised that this facility is designed with emergency exits for your safety. Upon exiting the meeting room, they are to your left and to the right. Furthermore, smoking is not permitted in the municipal building. Please take note that this meeting is being videotaped for possible future broadcast on Howell Television. Roll call. Mr. Bonovich? Present. Ms. Richmond? Present. Mr. Russo? Here. Deputy Mayor O'Donnell? Here. Mayor Berger? Present. Is there any reason to go into executive session? No, Mayor, not at the moment for this meeting. Thank you. At this time, is the, is the Cubs, are the Cub Scouts here? That's for the later meeting. Nice. The regular meeting. The regular meeting, right? The meeting after the meeting. Pledge, uh, Pledge of Allegiance. So there isn't this then? It, oh, that's for tonight. Um, so do you have one for this agenda or no? That's similar to no, this? No, okay. no, I'm sorry. Yeah, that was what I was. Oh, I'm sorry. No worries. Mary, we could do the uh, Pledge of Allegiance and then go right to the Yeah, yeah, discussion. yeah. I was reading this evening. I'm sorry. Yep. So please stand, please stand for the pledge at a moment of silence. Thank you. <clears throat> Are there any reports from the town officials? No, Mayor. Not for not thank, this point. thank you. At this point, I would like to open up this session, this section of the meeting for discussion regarding the McKenzie House and Library at 427 Lakewood Farmingdale Road. Lee Schaefer. I'm Lee Schaefer. I live at 2 Ardmore Road. Uh, when this special meeting was called to discuss the McKenzie House, uh, saying that the public would be invited and allowed to speak, I thought it would be more of a sharing information kind of a, a situation than, than the normal um, council meetings. So I prepared a presentation on the historical significance of the McKenzie House and its occupants over the years. And it wasn't until today that I realized that this was a five minute limited segment situation. So what I did was I prepared a packet of information for each of you. It has, um, a list of things that I'm going to just read so that the public also knows what I have given you. Would you also share that with our professionals here? The information so that they're aware. Yeah, oh, I it, it's or I could give you mine for a copy. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't. Okay. Um, the clerk has a copy. Perfect. That's okay. Thank you. Um, 
I was deeply disappointed when I found out I wasn't going to be able to give the presentation, but your packet does include some things that I think um, are necessary to address because in some of the meetings that I've watched, there seem to be some questions about how things got started with the historical society and um, uh, some of the historical facts and so forth. And so I think that this you know, will help clear it up if you have it all in one place. So in that packet, there's the, the Certificate of Incorporation of the Hal Historical Society and Committee Incorporated, Ordinance 0-8240, the deed DB4379, page 732, that's recorded in the Monmouth County Clerk's Office, Ordinance 0839, the letter from the state of New Jersey acknowledging the receipt of the attached six acres of land. The Squonka Mill Site Identification uh, 3350 from the New Jersey DEP, Historic Preservation Office, uh, New Jersey and National Register's case report. I know that that was mentioned in the past, and there seemed to be some question about the mill site. So the, the case report is in your packet. And also, um, I, at first I had a little trouble getting that because um, apparently the state holds archaeological information uh, close because people go to archaeological sites and steal, steal memorabilia from there. So they don't like to give out that information. But I explained to the woman that I spoke to that the Cultural Resources Digest of July uh, 2005 had published uh, by the New York, uh, excuse me, the New Jersey Department of Transportation um, an article about this site and um, gave all the information that she was telling me was secret was all in this article. And um, if you note on page two of that, when you do go through it, it says that um, after they took all of the ruins that were beneficial, took pictures and so forth, that that area was um, graded, plowed, and made into a uh, fisherman's parking. So it, that site is gone anyway. Um, I ask you to please read these documents carefully so that you can see what the original intentions were for the preserving of history in Howe Township. Although as a town we've strayed from this, these intentions are no less important today than they were at their inception. And um, I would ask you to consider the following actions to provide a room at the Howell Township Municipal Building for meetings and programs for the Howell Historical Society, especially since that cannot be done in the McKenzie House at this time. Uh, since there's not presently a viable historical society, I would ask you to appoint someone to publicly announce in the newspapers, on Facebook, and by poster special meetings to reorganize and legitimize the Howell Historical Society. The first meeting to take place as soon as possible with consideration for an adequate amount of time for advertisement. To gather anyone in the township who would be interested in joining the historical society, getting it rejuvenated and reorganized. And I also would ask you to please consider and pass an amendment to ordinance 083-9 section 10 by eliminating the sentence, provided, however, no such work shall be undertaken unless same is in conformance with all ordinances of the township and laws of the state of New Jersey and approve for same as secured by the township committee and replace that with from July 1st, 2019 to June 30th, 2020, work which may be done by volunteers shall be undertaken with the approval from the Howe Township engineer and inspected by the Howe Township building inspector. I would hope that you would approach this with an open mind and get as many facts as possible before you make a final decision. I'm sure that there are common sense ways that we can approach moving forward and maintaining the history and the integrity of the McKenzie House. There is also another packet that I um, 
ran off for you, this is actually the presentation I would have given. And it explains the history of the house itself, the back section, which is um, estimated around 1800, the front section around between 1854 and 1860. And uh, the front section is a Greek revival uh, style. The back section is more of a settler's cabin style. Um, th I think you'll find a great deal of information there that you might not otherwise have at your disposal. <coughs> I also wanted to let you know that I have made arrangements with Beth Henderson at the Howe Township Public Library to make a presentation there on March 28th at 6.30 p.m. And you should have a copy of the flyer attached to that packet as well. What is that presentation? It Excuse will be me? this presentation that you're going it to be... basically this, but because of the length of time there, it probably will have more in-depth information uh, than, than what you have. Thank you. But you've got a pretty heavy nutshell version. Sure. Okay. Um, I also have some questions. Um, I don't necessarily expect answers to them right now, but I would appreciate getting the information on Friday, if possible, when I pick up the presentation boards from the clerk's office. I left um, five presentation boards um, with Allison so that as you go through this historical information, you can look at the pictures that go along with the information and actually see what those features in the house look like. Um, <clears throat> first of all, I, I'm curious about the figure of $150,000 for repairs. I'm wondering if you got estimates from contractors for that figure, or is that something that was thrown out at some point, and just because it's been getting repeated, it's become the figure? Mr. Herman? So that figure came from our structural engineer and historical architect that we hired in 2016, late 2016, where we asked them to evaluate the structure because that was beyond my uh, professional purview and experience. So that's why we brought in the architect that had specialized in historic building repair and restoration work. Uh, so he provided that in conjunction with Mazer Consulting. So those numbers were based on their engineer and architect's cost estimates. Okay. for the work. Thank you. Um, I also understand that there was a report from that. Is that available to the public? Yes, it is. Is there a way that I could get a copy of it? Oh, uh, so sure. If you file an open request with the clerk's office, we can send it to you. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Um, I would also like to know if you've contacted Jesse McKenzie's family and made them aware of the circumstances regarding the possibilities of the future of the McKenzie House. I would defer to you. No, I have no contact information other than the Historical Society, uh, the two different groups that were contacted and invited to the meeting. Ha has anybody from their family contacted the um, council or the... Um, not to my knowledge, no, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Um, on August 28th of 2018, there was an article on centraljersey.com that said, quote, Woolley said she has copies of a letter from May 1982 from Jesse McKenzie's lawyer to Howell, which states that the house will go back to the family if it's not maintained. She supplied the council with copies of the letter, quote, it, d did that happen? You have, you have that letter? That did happen. We have a copy of the letter. The letter is unsigned, and there's no backup agreement for it that I've been able to define. Or define. So as okay. of right now, it's my understanding that whatever right of reverter is claimed to exist, there's nothing to back it up. Okay, so unless the family had something, there's, there's no backing at all? I've seen nothing in the township's possession that would support that sort of... Okay. Yeah. So in, in, in fairness, we've gone over, we're about 10 or 12 minutes in. So if I give you another three minutes, can you wrap up? Because we I have a... need three minutes. Perfect. Thank no. you. I, I just, there's a good number of people, so I just want to make sure everybody gets heard. 
Um, it, actually, that was that was the end of it. I just wanted, um, I just was curious about that letter because if if there was a reverter, then obviously all other options are off the table. So that was my uh, my question. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. That's a pretty good presentation. Pretty thorough. Let's see what she has. Anne Malsberry. Malsbury, 648 Adelphia Road. Uh, I have given each of you another packet of information on the Mackenzie Museum. Um, it contains a write-up, a newspaper write-up, a research paper on the settler's cabin, the Allen to Lloyd deed. The Lloyds were uh, sheriffs in the county. A list of owners of the property and uh, what we have on the property, the herb garden, the grounds, and a research library. Lee has an excellent presentation on the historical and structural merits of the museum that we plan to present at the uh, library on March 28th. <clears throat> My daughter saw some misinformation on how happenings on the internet, and I would like to address two of these errors. First, as you heard from Lee, the house dates from 1805 and 1850, not 1950. Second, the study that was done in January of 2016 reported the building was historical, should not be abandoned or demolished, and the repairs were listed in order of most urgent down to cosmetic, so as not to be a financial burden to the community. It is not an outlay of $150,000 all at the same time. If I were a lawyer, I would introduce the responses from How Happenings as Exhibit A as to why the township needs a viable historical society and location so the public can obtain the correct information. You might wonder what our plans are for moving forward. First is a membership drive in getting the museum cleaned and open to the public. Once the building is open, we can apply for two grants per year from the Monmouth County Historical Commission to help offset expense of repair. It would be nice if we could open and rejoin the tours of Weekend in Old Monmouth, which is the first weekend in May. Then we would advertise, solicit support from local groups and businesses, and fundraise. We already have the donation of a handmade $700 quilt to be raffled once we get the proper paperwork completed. We have tentative bylaws and interim officers. We would hold a regular election as soon as possible. In the meantime, we plan to offer four programs of historical interest in the coming year, and we invite each of you to attend. Also, I would be very happy to conduct a proper tour of the museum for you and your families. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have to say, I haven't been there in a very long time. <coughs> Kathy McGee. Trusting this works. Uh, my name is Kathy McKee. I live at 35 Merrick Road on the Farmingdale Post Office, Howell Township. Um, I've lived in Howell since 1982. So, um, well, at the time, I was a newcomer like a lot of people here now are. And um, I have no ancestral ties to Howell Township. Um, when I first moved in, I was very impressed <clears throat> at the um, really great rural vibe that we have here, uh, the farmlands and the woods and that type of thing. Um, in 1991, I volunteered to be on the Howell Township Shade Tree Commission, and um, I was on the commission until 2017, rather long time. Um, in the beginning, Gwen Burge was the chairperson of the Shade Tree Commission, and she had um, connections to the Howell Historical Society, and she was one of the um, early members there, and she persuaded me that that would be um, a good use of my volunteer time besides the Shade Tree Commission. 
So I started going to meetings there, and I was really super impressed with um, the fantastic job they did with restoring the McKenzie House, and they had really fascinating um, old artifacts there. And um, in particular, they had a really great library for historic papers and books, and people came in um, to do genealogy research um, for their ancestors from this area. And um, we are at this time very concerned about preserving all of that because there are people continuing to do genealogical research, and this avenue of study has been blocked off for them for some time now since the house hasn't been open to the public and um, it's falling into disrepair and unsanitary conditions. So we're hoping to get that going again. Um, the Howell Historical Society had a lot of really great events, I remember. Um, I even took my grandchildren to see the schoolhouse and um, there were tours of both the schoolhouse and the McKenzie House on a regular basis. Uh, there was an annual holiday party. Um, they had tea parties. A lot of really great events there. And um, in recent times, some of us who were previous members of the Historical Society started a group called the Heritage Group of Howell. And we had um, a local history event that we presented at the Howell Library um, back in 2017. And um, it was very well attended. And um, my granddaughter, she's graduating from college now, but she remembered um, when she and I and Virginia Woolley went on um, a little road tour of Howell history sites. She remembered some of the sites she had been to when she was a little kid. And she was our photographer, and um, Ellen McGar's husband, um, Don, presented a slideshow of the photos that she took of the historic buildings. And it's amazing how many um, are around, but most of them have gone over to private use. There were um, a number of schoolhouses around, and they've all been converted for the most part into private homes was only the one left, that's the Ordina Schoolhouse, which is also falling into disrepair at this point in time. It looks um, really shabby from the outside. It's badly in need of paint, and that's been pretty much closed, too. So um, I'd just like you to give some thought to reactivating the public access to these historic sites, because I think people are missing a lot by not having that ability. I've really been inspired by uh, the women who have been working with me who used to be with the Hell Historical Society, and we're eager to reactivate that. Thank you. Thank you. Elaine Taylor. Um, you know, these ladies, they've said everything that I'm going to say, so I will do my best. Um, I'm here to speak for the McKenzie Museum and for the house, because the house has uh, housed the Miller, the Miller's nephew and his family, and it, it house, houses uh, treasured antiques for the public to admire and to learn about. It has been used as a research library for many people to study and do their genealogy. And um, it has offered programs and lectures on historic subjects. It ta taught the fourth graders about the history of Howell. It has stood as a welcoming building as people uh, drive into Howell from 195 and uh, Farmingdale, and um, I just feel like, I think it's just really important that it has given so much to the community, and I think that it's just so important that we um, make the effort to 
uh, preserve it and just keep it going. And um, I feel that we have a very large budget in HAL of somewhere around $44 million. And um, it just would be really nice if we could find that $150 somewhere that we could put into the museum. And also to let the heritage group or a group, the historical society to reorganize and to make it happen again, to get it going again. Because we don't want to allow all the memories to be erased. And if we do, then what will we become? What kind of a society will we have if, if, you, if you don't know where you've come from? I just think it's so important. And um, I've been speaking to all kinds of people to try to find the money, to try to find grants and so forth. And my last phone call was from Dorothy Guzzo of the State Historic Trust. And they have money, but you have to have a matching grant with them. They give 75%, and then we have to give 25%. And um, I just, you know, it gave me hope speaking with her. And I'm hopeful that if nothing else, we will be able to talk to her because this was the first time she's heard of the McKenzie Museum situation. And so if you could instruct your professionals to talk to her and see if we could move forward in a positive way to make this happen. I would really Would you please it. provide that information to Brian? Absolutely. This way we have it. Okay. Thank you. Um, that's it. Thank you very much. Thanks, Elaine. Thank you, Elaine. And Julian? Like Elaine, a lot of what I want uh, to I'm address. So, I'm sorry, ma'am. Just for the record, your name and address. I'm sorry. No worries. Ann Julian, J U L I A N. I am a former resident of Howell Township for almost 40 years. I currently live in um, Bricktown, which is just the next town over. Um, with this, I have spent a lot of hours at the McKenzie Museum over time. When it was open, viable, you had the fourth graders coming on class trips so that it was an active part of the community. It was part, an active part of the school system. With that being said, the um, dysfunction that we find the historical society in at the moment is very upsetting to those of us who have given and given and given. I have a question to ask. Are the current people who are in charge of the historical society here today to defend themselves or the museum or to go after us who are trying to reopen it? I don't know. I don't know, I don't know the people well enough to recognize them and say, oh, they're so-and-so, so-and-so. That in itself should well, is almost there, Is say, there anybody in the audience that's, no? Okay. Okay. That in itself should say, at least it does to me, that there is little or no interest in defending their position and therefore whatever your decision is, they would be somewhat willing to abide by it. So forgive me. Go ahead. Please. They and they their decision. Whoever is in charge. Whoever is the representation on the books of the current Howell Historical Society. Well, who would that be? 
I understand it was, and it's, this may have changed, it was Don Smith, it was Ida Devlin, and it was John Amata. They were the three last of the representatives of the inactive historical society. There have been no meetings, there have been no fundraisers, there has been absolutely no action whatsoever at that building in, you say, weeks or months? Let's try years, okay? And if someone said, well, you can make it by a, make an appointment to come and visit, except the telephone number that was assigned to the Historical Society, there was no voicemail. You, the and voicemail was full. It was never emptied. So calling did absolutely no good to make an appointment because maybe you wanted to bring youngsters through and give them a taste of what it used to be, okay? All of this being said, on the um, Howell happenings, and although I'm not a active, I, I'm not a taxpayer in the town of Howell any longer, <coughs> On Howell Happenings, and this was supported by Mr. Bonovich, posted on Facebook, Howell Happenings posted a survey. Should we keep and fix or donate or sell? Now, the only thing I'm asking out of that is, should this body decide to sell, what would the asking price be? That's it. I thank you for your time. I hope I haven't talked in a circle, but I do feel very, very passionate about getting back in there and opening up those doors and give the town, I call it Howell Pride, I really do. And just as Elaine said, when people come off the, uh, off the interstate, I had a friend, you'll enjoy this, in Brick, say to me, you used to belong to Howell Historical, didn't you? And I said, yes, I did. She said, are they looking to make that building a haunted house? And that was before the paint job. I have not spoken to her in a while, but I know she's got to be smiling because it was a force happening, but it did happen, and it does make a difference. You have to admit that. So I thank you for your time. As I say, I hope I didn't talk in a circle. Your decision is yours to make, but <laughs> I'm hoping. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So there's nobody else on the list. So there's nobody else left on the list. <laughs> but at this point, if there's anyone in the audience who would like to come up, please do so. Barbara, please. Yeah, it's this, we always have a list. Mayor, if I might, I received a phone call today from Pauline Smith telling me that John Armada was sending an email to the governing body uh, I guess explaining that he was not attending today. I'm going to presume it was work-related. I don't have the email. I didn't get it. Did did we get an email? Um, I did not receive anything from him. So I just wanted to um, to share that that um, that so apparently I guess John was made aware of it but could not attend. Good afternoon. Mayor and Council, Barbara Dixel, 628 Piazza Vittoria, Freehold, New Jersey. I just want to put this on the record. Um, I know I've been here 27 years, but I was not an active member of the Historical Society, even though I was in the beginning, but I'm not, and I wasn't. I just need to put this on the record. Um, I did have a meeting with Mr. Joe Clark this week, and I, I, I need to tell you that I gave him a list of 
grants available to restore historic houses that if you apply and you're lucky enough to get one, it may not cost you five cents to fix the Mackenzie. And, but that has to be, you know, gone after, and that has to have someone to want to work on it. But there's a list like this I gave him that uh, for uh, government and restoring historic property. So please look into that. Also, um, I spoke with somebody who was also active in the Historic Society, and she said uh, there used to be a mailbox out front that's not there now, but <coughs> she has no doubt that somewhere in a post office there's mail sitting and waiting for the Mackenzie Museum. So if anybody wants to research the United States Post Office in Farmingdale, maybe, or wherever mail goes when it's not deliverable, it might be a good idea. Um, also, um, I, I had, I've been in touch with Dot Gratton. She wasn't here. She can't be here today. But I did ask her, because she was also, with these ladies, very, very active in the beginning. And I asked her for most of her documents, which she graciously gave me, and I copied them. So I just want to run it off the list and let you know I gave it all to Mr. Clark. If they want me to, I will recopy this for every one of you. Um, okay. I have, a, I have a first document of the property uh, dated 1807 uh, for deeds and mortgages. And it's handwritten. Uh, Jerry and I went to the county and um, we looked up the historic books. We were able to pick off one of the deeds. It's barely readable. Most of these things now are on microfiche. They can't do this because you, can't ba you can barely see it. It's all handwritten in these very old, ancient books. Uh, I have another thing from a summary of whatever, starting in 1778. I'm just going to run this off and just tell you um, an inventory of the Mackenzie dated 1858. Um, that, that was from, this is from Thomas, Thomas Weeks. Another thing dated 1858, also inventory. Um, I did print a, I did print a recent thing of the Mackenzie, the house itself. Let me see, Cal Historical Society. Uh, bylaws, I have a copy of bylaws. Uh, to manage the affairs of, I guess this is, I don't know, it's, it's documents again. I'll be glad to copy this stuff for all of you. Uh, Jesse McKenzie. Um, Barbara, apart from all of the documents, um, is there anything that you wanted to ask the professionals or ourselves? Well, I've spoken to Joe Clark. I picked his brain for more than an hour, and I would like to ask that um, it be restored. It needs to be saved. It howls history, like like the ancient, like the archives in the United States government, the Declaration of Independence, the Bill of Rights. They're saved for future. They're saved as our heritage, as our history. Please, it. it it does not have to cost a lot of money to restore the museum. It's been let go. Nobody wanted to deal with it. When they used to put money away for it, they took it away to put it someplace else. So again, I've got documents and documents. I will be glad to copy this for you. It's, it's like I say, it, it's Doc Gratton's personal historic documents from the Mackenzie Museum. And along with these other ladies, she was there when it was born. And she's very compassionate about it, but she wasn't able to be here today. She um, has a lot of trouble getting around and walking, and it was just she couldn't be here. So I, I, I picked her brain long enough and said, 
we're all getting older. I'm going to be 80. She's in her 80s. We're all growing up, and we're not going to be here one day. I told her, you can't take it with you, and you're not drilling a hole in the box. Let me have it. I will copy it. I will give it to the township. It's our history. And she did. She came over to my house. I sat and went through all of it with her. I took what I wanted, and I've given her back the, her... I gave her back her original documents. I don't want to touch them. To me, they're, they're, they're godly. They're, they're holy. I won't touch them. I, I have the copies. I will gladly copy them for you. Mr. Clark has it. And save it. That's all. I'm begging you like everybody else is. Please save it. It's Howell's heritage. It's our history. Like the Declaration of Independence and the Bill of Rights. Save it. Our children and our future children and our future residents of Howell need to know where they came from. Remember, I, I, did the, I did the Hestel family history, and I did the history of Howell, and I gave it to the public schools, and Mr. Isola has finally um, is incorporating it into the school system. Every kid in every class and every grade is taking some of this history of Howell because every kid who came here from Brooklyn, from Staten Island, or from you know where, Lives in Howell, great system, great school system, great place. Has no idea how historic Howell is. 1658, the Estelle family. Thomas Daniel James <laughs> Estelle landed in Howell on the Neversink River. William's wife gave birth to the first American kid in, in Howell, along with the Indians who were there. Estelle Lane is still there. The historic, given to them, 120 acres given to them by Governor Nichols in New York. I worked with Sharon Carpenter Migliaccio, and I held that crimson Bible that came over on that ship in 1658 that was given to the family in 1485 by the King of France. I held that Bible in my hands, and they wanted to turn that property into a color site. Well, I and Sharon went after them, and I worked with Jeffrey Lehrer the COA attorney, no, it's not a COA site. It's never going to be a COA site, and they better never make it a COA site. It's Howell's history from 1658 when the first people came here. Please, I beg you, we've got to save this stuff. The, the, the Estelle family is still on the property. It's still there. The houses are there. It's still almost a dirt road. Save it. Please, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else? So one at a time, please, and then state your name and address. That's fine. Good afternoon. Hello. Um, I'm John Fabiato, I'm executive director of the Monmouth County Historical Commission. Um, I've been working there for um, about five years or so, and one of my first uh, um, projects was uh, the Mackenzie House. Uh, back in um, 2015, I, it was, we did uh, support the painting, which was referred to earlier, and I, um, I want you to know that since then, um, actually before then, uh, the Historical Commission has always had great interest in the Mackenzie Museum, and it was a shame what happened over the years, but um, I just want you to know that we have grants available. We have preservation grants that have been available since 1990. Um, you could apply for up to $7,500 of matching funds for uh, bricks and mortar type preservation projects. If um, since 2015 you, uh, you kept it up, um, potentially you could have gotten uh, quite a bit of a ways there as far as maintaining the house. I think. Um, as a professional, I'm wondering, uh, what's the great concern now? Is there any other um, use of the property that's overriding the concern uh, with preservation? Um, I mean, there was something in there about Alaire State Park, uh, wanting to acquire it. I, I worked 30 years for the state, ironically, uh, at DP in the budget area. I know parks very well. Uh, uh, they don't do a good job with historic sites uh, themselves. Um, if they ever came in there and, um, and uh, tear, tore down the Mackenzie House for parkland, they'd hear from me as an individual. Um, I mean, it's just not right. 
There's no reason that this can't be saved. It's historic. I mean, just because the original site is there, I think I read that in a recent article, that's absurd. Again, as a historian, uh, it's the site that's important, and it's the history. And I think that needs to be preserved here, and I look forward to working with whomever, whichever group is, is uh, in charge, and the town, obviously, and uh, let's get this done. I mean, it's not that difficult. There's monies available. There's Historic Trust, which was previously mentioned. Um, we, we give re-grants. We could even give you a small amount of money towards getting it nominated to the uh, register of historic places, which is an important first step. And it does, it, first of all, you gotta get it qualified, and, and that should be easy, easily done. Uh, again, opinion on its eligibility, and then move forward. I mean, it's gonna cost a few thousand dollars, but it's well worth it. And then you will qualify for grants, not only from the state, but there's a 1772 foundation. Uh, there's other um, national groups that support historic preservation. And I think it's, it, should, it could be easily done if you have the wherewithal to follow through. Thank you. Thank you. If I could ask you a last name again, I'm sorry. Oh, F-A-B-I-A-N-O. <coughs> Thank you. Is there anyone else that wants to come up? Afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Don McGurr. I uh, <coughs> live in Doris Avenue in Howell. I've been a resident of Howell since 1975. I'm a retired police officer from the town. My wife was very uh, active in the uh, historical society. I was not. Um, and just to give you some historical perspective, mm -hmm. and I will uh, make a very strong suggestion based on what my experience was. Um, I'm not going to, I'm not here to insults at people, but there came a time in the historical society where there was a disagreement over how things were being run. Um, there were essentially two factions. The faction that was running, that was in charge, the elected officers, um, enacted a bylaw that said that they could suspend the voting, voting rights of any member that they deemed fit to do so. Letters started going out of the people that disagreed with them and said, you're not allowed to vote anymore. That made things worse, was fuel on the fire. Some more letters went out that said, you can't vote now because you're friends with the person that we told can't vote anymore. Essentially, a large number of people that were dedicated, sincere, historical people, and again, I have no ax to grind because I was not one of them. I was a member just socially because it was something my wife really enjoyed. <clears throat> they came to me for help. They had no money to hire a lawyer. I researched the nonprofit laws. We wound up, we got it to the point where we got to the Monmouth County Court. There was a law that says that they can appoint an administrator when a nonprofit is not being run according to you know, the legal principles. The judge ordered them, the people that were in charge at the time, to reach out to everybody and reinstate the voting rights and have a new election. That was never done. Essentially, the, this large group of people um, just gave up and walked away. And the people that... May I? Yes. What year is that? I'm going back into 2005, 2006. Um, my wife lost track of it. I, I gave up on it. It was just consuming too much of their lives. These people were... They came to me. I couldn't believe the the heartbreak that these people were feeling, that they, they couldn't be involved anymore. At any rate, my suggestion is this. Um, I am a, a student of history and genealogy. I believe that the money that it would take to keep the McKenzie House running um, is well worth it. However, <clears throat> the one thing that I tried to get the town to do back then that I couldn't get any support was there needs to be oversight before you spend a dime. You need to have the historical society reorganized under the supervision of the township committee, an open election, and make sure that things are done fairly because when they chased all those people out, they were the workers and eventually it fell in disrepair because 
people that wound up in charge just didn't have the, they didn't have the love for it. They didn't have the sincere interest in keeping it running. It was, a, it was just all about ego. <coughs> and that's all I can tell you. There are people waiting to take this over and preserve the things that you've got there's just, you have to give them the guidance and you have to open the door. You have to make sure that the people that are officially in charge of this nonprofit are really in it for the right reasons and are willing to put the work in. And I think it's been demonstrated because I just heard a few names. Seems to me that nothing has changed since all those people got thrown out. It's the same people in charge and they've let it go into disrepair. They've given up on the uh, tours and basically because all the people that were doing the work got, got chased out. And I think you need to give it back to the people that care before you spend any money. And that's all they need. They need one election. And they'll get the job done. So uh, you I don't want to publicly throw names out. Anybody wants to talk to me privately, I have all the documentation at home. And I made the presentation at the Monmouth County Courthouse in front of the judge. And... And he, as, as uh, you must have an attorney here, township attorney, I'm sorry. Mr. You know Clark. that they don't like to make decisions. They like to mediate things. And they said, everybody go back and let's work this out. We're going to have a meeting. And I want the historical society to reach out to all these members and have a meeting. That was the last we heard. And at that point, I could not get anybody in the township committee to um, force their hand and I think the only leverage that you have is the money. You don't spend a dime until you're sure that the people that are running the historical society have an interest, a sincere interest, or on a, on a guarantee that the work is going to get done. Otherwise, you're wasting your money. So, so just a couple of questions. And, you know, I'm not sure. I, I would think maybe the professionals could help me on this. I hope. I don't know. <laughs> So I guess I have a couple of questions. When I keep hearing two groups, two factions, so what you're, and I'm just going to say it back so I understand. Yeah, you're not going to, I almost am embarrassed to stand up here and tell you what went on because it was so. <laughs> incredible. I, when I first went to a meeting and heard it, I, I, being involved in the legal profession, I was a police officer for 25 years. I never saw anything like this in my life. I've been involved in nonprofits. I've been involved in the PBA. I've been involved in all kinds of organizations. I've never seen anything like what I saw take place that year. Okay. So here are some of my, I guess, just you know, Ask me thoughts, you want. questions. So there were two different groups. Of, there were there was one group that split into two groups. There was one that? historical society that was going along pretty good, right? And then some people voiced some opinions about some the way certain things were being done, specifically the handling of historical artifacts, and the way mm -hmm. tours were being done. Things were being removed from the museum. There was. There was just a few things that some people were uncomfortable with, and they voiced their opinions at the meeting. Okay. And then... Letters went out. To those people who voiced their opinion. Yeah. And... And a, and a bylaw was passed that said that the... So, so the, the bylaws were changed. Is Correct. that what you're saying? So yeah. the... What? Oh, I'm sorry. So... Group two? A bylaw was, the bylaws were changed by the faction, I will call it, that was the elected officials of the Historical Society. Okay. And they said that the board has the right to suspend the voting rights of anybody they deem fit to do so, which effectively prevented anyone from voting against them or voting on any new bylaws or having a say in the way the historical society was run. Was this, was this ever brought up to the historical society itself, maybe in Trenton or Monmouth no, County? No, we took it to the Monmouth County Court. Oh, you did? If, if you guys want to speak, I would love to hear you. You could come back up. All right? And, and I I'm just, not taking sides in this. I'm just saying to you that it became so divisive 
that the only way that it's going to work is if there's an independent... Well, I would have to believe that there needs to be an entire new election process. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's got to be a review of bylaws to ensure that they are true bylaws for a 501c3 a type organization, as well as, you know, minimum and maximum number of members that need to be on the, the board. I can, specifically, I can specifically tell you a couple of things that, that there was... There was no requirement for a member to be a member for a certain amount of time before mm -hmm. they had voting rights. So the first thing that happened, the first election that I went to, and again, I did not know the faces or the names, but there was the biggest crowd they had ever had, and most, of the, a lot of the people had never been there before. I think we would call it stacking the deck, okay? That election took place. People were now firmly entrenched as being in charge of the board, and hence the new bylaw that says, and I'm not making this up, we can suspend the voting rights of anybody that we deem fit. That and if I dig legal. far enough into my attic, I can probably find the copies of the letters that went out, or I'm sure that there's some people here that are so into history that I'm sure they've got those letters. <laughs> because I wouldn't want anybody to take my word for what went on. Well, excuse me, I, have, I actually have something to say. Go ahead. Um, I received an email at the 11th hour, and I'm, I know we all received it, but I actually have copies here of the letters you're talking about, <laughs> about the bylaws, about the elections. Um, Doris Avenue, is that what you said? That's where I live. Ellen, Elaine, I'm sorry. Ellen, Ellen's my Ellen. wife. okay. I have those documents. Have those letters? Oh, I do. She got into the attic before I did. Uh, no, actually, um, Mr. Herman actually found them and sent them to us. Um, unfortunately, he just found them, so I'm not quite sure the council was able to catch up um, on them. But as you're speaking and I'm going through them, I'm like, that sounds so familiar. Sounds familiar. Sounds familiar. So um, with respect to that, I think if you give us a chance to look through them, it, makes more, it will make more it sense. As if to what look, he's speaking about. If you about. look through them and see the wording of those letters, I think you'll get a feeling for what was going on with the board of the Historical Society. And again, I would like to just say that the conversations that I've had with people since then, these people were heartbroken. This was, for most of them, this was their social life. This was their passion. Virginia Woolley being one of them. That's one of the ones that I remember most because, you know, well, she was 20 years younger then. She was very active. Um, these were people that I would be proud to be around and uh, proud to assist in any way I can. The way they were treated was unconscionable. Well, these letters, um, most of them are dated 2002, 2003. Right. Um, and... I mean, That's how there's, my there's wife well, there's one letter here. It's probably about five or six pages, and it probably, as I'm looking through it, talks about how important, you know, the Mackenzie House is. And, and um, I, like I said, I have not read them yet. I but, just want you to read the ones that told the people they couldn't vote anymore. Yeah, that, I, that I just saw that one. It says it all. It says it all. It just goes to the heart of, of the heart of the what was in the hearts of the people that were running things. It was cruel. It was against the laws that run nonprofits. It was disgusting. And I couldn't get anybody in the township committee to use the hammer that they had, which was straighten this out or we're not spending any more money. Nobody wanted to buck the people that needed to be stopped. And that's all I can say. Thank you. All right. Thank you. I appreciate your candor. Is there anyone else? Kathy Novak, 16 Stratton Drive. Hello. You know you could. Yeah, pull yeah, I can. <laughs> I, 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 okay. I, I really have a financial question, so I guess it's for Lou. Um, um, how much? money is in the um, municipal open space fund that the taxpayers have on their bill that we pay every year? Um, give me one minute. Sure. sure. And then the, the second question I have is, 
I believe that money can be used for historical buildings to preserve historical buildings. Um, that's what I've been reading. I'm not sure if that applies to Hal, but it seems to. Brian? Uh, Mayor, if oh, I could, Joe? I know uh, Joe Clark Absolutely. did some research Thank while you. Lou is looking up the number. Oh, yeah. I did. So on the open, spa uh, open space front, uh, monies can be used for historic preservation purposes, but only for those historic properties that meet the criteria for inclusion in the New Jersey Register of Historic Places. Uh, currently, the McKenzie House is not on any state or federal historic register. Okay, so we just had a gentleman uh, say that uh, from Monmouth, from that he would w help work with the people to get that done. Mr. Fabiano? Yes. Is he still here? He left? Yeah, okay. Yeah, he did say that he, he could work with, yeah, I, with the group. I, I think that's what I heard. Um, the uh, the Open Space Trust uh, finished 2018 with uh, three million six hundred eighteen thousand eight hundred twenty nine dollars. Okay, so that can that money at any point be transferred to another a line item that needs more needs more money, or does that stay there? That money is held in trust. Okay, so the money is held in trust. So there's like over three million dollars, right? Correct. Okay, and is it earmarked for anything? I know you're going to be working on the budget, so that's just. Um, something to keep in mind that uh, the, the the issue though is that Mr. Clark just said it has to be approved for us to be able to utilize those funds and that's it's not yet approved right but mm, we, we, we I understand that yeah, but right. yeah I, I can't I can't tell you what I'm you know I'm just saying that it sounds like there's a lot of help it sounds like there's a lot of help to get this done that's then there's money if if it if it does happen and, um, you know, um, uh, Hal was not my home. I have no historical um, ties to Hal, but I hear what everyone is saying, and uh, I support them wholeheartedly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else like to come, on, come up to speak? Good afternoon, Joan Osborne, 28 Bronia Street, Howell. Um, I just wanted to thank you all for having this hearing. I know this topic has come up numerous times, and I think it was very critical that you had a special meeting for it. I appreciate that you did it. I think you got a lot of new information today, certainly things that I haven't heard before, and I have tried to, to follow this issue. Um, I think what you've heard, and, and I wasn't trying to be last. I, I think there probably will still be a few more people to speak, but I haven't heard anybody come and say it's really going to make a difference to their life or the, um, you know, their beneficial uh, evaluation of the community if this place is taken off of our hands and just given away or, or let to go away. Nobody's going to really benefit from that. But clearly there are a lot of people who are very passionate and very clearly in favor of doing what we can to keep it. And what I wanted to just mention is um, that the budget process, I mean, people have said, you know, show me your budget and I'll know what your values are. I think we have to find a way to get some money to do the preservation uh, in the next budget or the budget after that while we're pending getting, um, you know, approval to be put on the pres or, um, historic property list. Uh, $150,000, everybody, well, you know, that sounds like a lot of money for a house that, you know, only a few people go to or only a few people care about. But when you look at it over time, you know, for the money that we haven't been putting in in the last 15 years and for the future, for your kids to be able to take their kids there, and that property only gets more valuable as a historic asset as time goes on. So when you look at $150,000, it's really not a lot to preserve something that, there's not a lot of in our community. There's really not a lot of places that are historic. And for a community that's been in existence as a township and as a crucial part of New Jersey history, I mean, if you look back at old maps, so many towns in Monmouth County were carved out of Howell Township. I mean, it really is an important place. And to preserve something from its early history is important. And I would ask that you consider all the options that were presented today before making a rash decision, which I think we will all regret. Thank you, John. Thank you.
I think I might be able to add a little bit uh, of information. You, I know you came up, but you still have to give us oh, your name. Oh, I'm and sorry. Address. Thank Lee you. Lee Schaefer to Thank Ardmore you. Road. I think I might be able to give you a little information that goes along with what she was asking. Mm -hmm. um, I went to the Monmouth County Historical Association um, on Saturday, and they do have a case report that was done by Monmouth County on the McKenzie House. I can get you a copy of that. It said on there that it was possibly eligible, but no one ever pursued it to go any further. So it probably could be evaluated for state or national registry if, if that paperwork gets done and somebody follows through with it. Thank you. Thanks. Is there anyone else that wants to come up? Uh, my name is Edie Smith. I uh, am now living in Jackson, but I was <coughs> in Howell for a long time. I, I'm here to support some of the things that Mr. McGurr was saying. Excuse me, I'm a little bit. Why, why don't you have a seat? In the museum, there was a pamper. That was uh, 1802, I think. It was made by uh, a friend. I'm trying to remember exact. Oh, thanks. Uh, it, it's very old. It was made in 1802. I think it was Napoleon's uh, granddaughter. Or it, it, somehow or another, Napoleon Bonaparte was related to this. Sampler. Anyway, it was sitting in the sun. Uh, it is very old, and the sun keeps beating on it, and it's going to destroy it. So I asked permission to take it and get it uh, UV glass put in it so to protect it. And uh, we first took it and off the wall. Every time we took it off the wall when the museum was closed and so no sun could shine on it, they put it right back. And um, finally, uh, we took it and put it upstairs so at least the sun wouldn't be shining on it. But they put it right back where the sun was on it all the time. So finally, uh, I asked permission if I could take it and have it evaluated, find out how much it would cost to have it preserved. And I was allowed to do so. So I took. Uh, I took it to three different places. Each time I took it to a separate place, I told one of the Board of Trustees where I was taking it. I told how much it cost, and uh, I told them why I didn't like that place. Third place I liked. Uh, third place was one of the cheaper ones, but they were going to reframe it. They were going to put it in UV glass and preserve it, which is what I wanted. But uh, the president told me, don't do it yet, because um, <coughs> she didn't have permission to let me go ahead with it. So I said, OK. I brought it up at the next meeting. The ne before the next meeting, she went to the frame company that I had. I kept it there. And she demanded to have it back. And the woman said, no, I will not give it to you back, because you're not the one that brought it in here. At the meeting. Uh, they, I'm trying to remember exactly what happened. Excuse me. Oh yeah, yeah. She come on she, now. You know better than calling out. Uh, no, Sandra. But she, she called the police department saying that I stole it, which I didn't. <laughs> I told her where it was. I told her why I left it there. I wanted it to be discussed at the meeting. And she turned around and sent a policeman over to my house and saying that I stole it, which is, it's not true. And uh, they did get it back, but it cost me $3,000 for a lawyer because it went to court 
and I had to pay $3,000 for a lawyer to represent me. And uh, it's... Who, who is this she? I don't really want to name names. Um, excuse me, again, th these documents are the ones that Mr. Herman sent us today. So um, the letter to the frame company yeah. and, and the incident report from the police department, Mr. Herman emailed us that all too, so we, ha we actually have the documentation okay, great. with the woman's name, and so we all have that. So that's confirming your... Okay, because I, I really don't want to... I understand, but we, we can, we'll know who it is when, when we all read the paper. Let okay. me know that yep. what Mr. Uh, McGurr said is true, and I've got, yes. uh, I was directly involved in it. That's, that's all for now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Mayor, I have the historic map of how we meet today. If anybody wants to look at it. It's actually on the table, Barbara. Huh? Actually, it's actually on the table. Hi, Sandra Solly, Birdstar Road, Farmingdale. I, I want to say what I've said many times before. History is a valuable use to the community. It creates cohesiveness, cooperation, and so, a sense of self. When anyone discusses coming to Howell, why would they come? To see big box stores, empty mom and pops, restaurant after restaurant, and gyms. There are at least three attractions. The Russian Church, the Calmont Community, and the Grange, a former one-room schoolhouse. Elaine Taylor, Tara Dolan, Lynn Gillette, Sandra Solly, and Evelyn O'Donnell are the last legally elected officers. Six years ago, the executive officers were told that they were not... It was not reasonable to have executive officers and trustees because there was only 11 members. Hello? So that means we were dismissed. Executive officers, gone. And we were the ones that did the work. Trustees do Wait, a different could thing. You, could, could you repeat that for me? What? Oh, yeah, we're the ones that do all the work. Executive officers, is that the So product? the executive officer, like the chairperson? Yes. President, vice president, secretary, treasurer. Members of the... Elected officials and trustees were dismissed with a bylaw change. Right. That was not voted on. They have it. He has it. It's in the bylaws. Anyway, um, at that time, everything stopped. There, there were no meetings, no membership drives, no collections of dues, no, no fundraising. I was the secretary at least 20 years. I was the only member to pay my dues and come back after the control group hired an attorney with historical money to defend themselves. And Mr. McGurr made reference to that. There was a Vanguard account that had, at one time, $14,000 in it. No one knows where that is. At, at reorg on January 1, item 39 adopts Robert's Rules of Order. According to one expert, you serve until you are replaced. If that is true, then the last law legally elected based officers should receive permission to enter the building for tours, especially Old Mammoth Weekend, which is coming up. So in my, my estimation, we can go in there and dust that place up and get it ready. But that is a to... fabulous estimation. <laughs> well, no. But I'm not quite sure that that is feasible Mr. right Fabiano now. Said, Let him uh, he said, yeah. I understand. I know. But unless you've been in there physically to walk through the building you, uh, yourself? I have been in there, not recently. Did um, you feel in jeopardy? My children were quite young at the time. Oh, no, I'm talking about you in the last two no, years. No, I have not been in there. Well, um, that's what I'm saying. Mr. Bonovich so and I have been in there two we about three weeks ago, yep. right? Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't even go down the basement. Why would you? <laughs> to check out the construction and the, what are those called? Um, well, well, we were checking. The, we we no, read the, the report and we uh, wanted to see the foundation and the foundation and the chimney and everything is sinking. So we and, wanted to see for ourselves. Uh, yeah, but logically, you don't have to go down into the basement if you're doing a tour of the house. Oh uh, no, 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 that's not the point. Thank I think, you, Mayor. I think the point that they're trying to make is that they read a report that said it's sinking, and so they went down to view that, and if in fact the building is sinking. It is a danger. But every building sinks. Every, this building is sinking. 
Is and that the, true, I'm Mayor? I'm sure not at the rate of <laughs> at, the other building. Well, that's I, I could, it's 200 I could, years old. But, so, but that's the point. It's not, nobody, up, we're here today gathering information. We're not making any decisions here at this meeting. We want the information, but realistically speaking, I nor you can say that the building is safe or not safe. Neither one of us are engineers. So we rely on the professionals when they get somebody to come in and take a review, a, a new review. I have, I'm all for that. But let's, I don't want you to say that you just want to open the door without making sure that the structural integrity of the building is sound. It has been said here and in the newspaper that small groups can go in there. So I want to know who determined what a small group is. I don't know. Well, I'm just saying. It, it didn't come here. out of my mouth, no, so I can't. No, but it was said here. By whom? To whom? Well, Councilwoman Smith is no longer on the council. I know, but she said it. Well. In the last year or so. That's all well and good that someone has, and we all have a different opinion, right? My concern is purely to ensure when anybody walks into the building that they are safe. That's and all well and I good. I cannot, in good conscience, open the door without getting the information from engineering. I don't think that that's fair. I don't think that's a fair thing to ask. We, we paid $9,000 for somebody to go in there and make an estimate of what needed to be done. That's two years ago, isn't it, Jim? Well, does it make it worse than it was yes. two years ago? I would assume, yes. Yeah, somebody was just in there to take pictures. I, I'm not sure that one thing has to do with the other thing. Well, do you know what I mean? I'm talking about... Let's make sure the building is structurally sound. That's all I'm asking. All right. Well, I think I would like to see another commission go in there and examine the house because I don't know why. It took, it took 20 years for some person to decide that the place was not structurally sound because they wanted to control the building. Listen, I, uh, this is what I think. I think that there was a huge problem with the Historical Society because that's exactly what I've heard today. There were, it was one group, there was some dissension in the group, they split the group into two, and then one, uh, the second group, I, or the first group, whichever one it would be, was eliminated, okay? So there are a couple of things, I believe, that are going on here today, right? There's a group of people here that are, are talking about the historical society and saying that we need to reenact the, society, the historical society. There are rules and regulations with every 501c3 and every organization and society on how you can reinstill, what are the, what are the, the bylaws of the historical society around 2005. I don't believe that in 2005 and it's 2018 the same people are the executive committee. I wouldn't think so. I think that it would, it would I'm just trying to. I'm, C3 expire because they didn't pay $25. But that's my point. That's my point. You can't. You, They're the ones that want no, to. No, no, no. I, well, look, everybody, many people are coming up here and saying they, she, them, and you want us to make a decision <laughs> with having pronouns everywhere. We all know who she, her, and they are, but we're not naming names in public. But to be fair, you want us to make a um, you want us to make a, a decision which is in the best interest of the township, as well as um, you know those those who care. So we need to have all that information. And to be fair, we're we're trying to get it on from all. And like the mayor said, from all angles, right? From our professionals, you want to send someone back in there at the expense of nine thousand dollars to reconfirm what we already know, and then. You know, so it's a process, and we're opening up this, you know, forum right now, so we could give you guys, or, or hopefully, what is best for everyone involved. You didn't seem to understand what I said. Oh. Until like two, three years ago, someone decides that the building's not safe. Okay, but with all and due respect. The only that can go in there is the chairman of the trustees. Okay. Nobody else can go in there. There is not. What, but, but who else is, who, I there mean, when no you say. The there is no trustee. Right, who, who. I know, I know, but so that's the one. But you're, but. The trustee when he said there was a problem with the house. But, 
Cassandra. I absolutely hear what you're saying, and I respect everything that everyone has said here today. All I think I'm asking is that I have the professional staff ensure that there has been no additional structural changes and if it can be opened or not. That's not a decision that you nor I can make. All I know is somebody was just in there to take pictures. That's all well and good. You opened it up for some person to go in there and take pictures. Okay. And I don't know who that person but was. What and is, what is that? What, so the pictures, what is that? Someone going in there and taking pictures, what, is that, what does that mean? I don't understand why what your they, point why is. Why are they allowed to go in? Okay. So, 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 again, this is someone was in, the, in there, someone said, how can we, I, I can't, I can't. You can ask somebody who was well, there. Well, I, I can't. PPW okay, hold, but, Sanja, but, if you're going to come to the council and any, any, anybody wants to come to us and they want to have a discussion, they want us to sit up here and they want us to, to verbally discuss the issue. Yes? In all due respect, I think that that expectation should be double-sided. So I should have the same expectation of the, someone who comes up to the microphone as the person at the microphone asking the question, right? So you want transparency, I want transparency. I have no idea who was in the building, with what member of DPW, or when. But you're saying, this per give me the information so I could then ask my town manager and s or our deputy manager to say, did this happen? What was the purpose? He knows. Well, I can well then have the discussion with him. <laughs> With him. Actually, I know. well, I can't Sandra, have the discussion. I'm sorry. You and I did have this discussion. Yes, we did. So let's just, you know, get to the answers because um, in the past, if someone wanted to check on something in the in the research, they have called, and then I would call the manager. Manager calls DPW. Someone meets me there at a certain time. The person goes in, does their research. I stay there while they're doing it, and then we leave. The person that was taking the pictures the other day was doing it to put together some information for this meeting. So it's not really a mystery. There's nothing secretive really going on here. This has been done the same way every time someone asks to be into the library. Um, we do try to accommodate everybody that wants to go in to do any research because there are things in that library that even the county doesn't have. So we're fortunate in that regard. So yes, they were in there. They were in there, I was in there, and DPW was there. So there was four of us, actually five. Is that a small group? Well, it's five people. Do you feel insecure? Um, I hardly ever feel insecure. Sometimes <laughs> impatient. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, but what I'm saying to you is that this meeting <laughs> was designed to gather as much information as we could so that we could decide at some point do we have something here that has the kind of value that we should put money into and keep it going? And it's really quite that simple. So whether four people are there or 25 people are there, I would, I would say to you that if someone said to you a year ago that the building's unsafe and that person isn't here today to define unsafe to you, that, that's almost a non-issue at this point. Would I take groups of people through today? No, the place is very dirty. No, of course not, I would not. Um, our effort, my effort, the reason why I wanted this meeting, and we finally did something in a public forum, was to get all of the truth out there. And there's been a lot of misconceptions, mistruths, misprints, um, and that's unfortunate. So I think today we actually are progressing. I think that people have in their possession printed information that's been emailed or mailed out that proves certain things, and that may influence how the people in the council feel. But the real deal is this information today, and we maybe have to have another meeting. Maybe there's something else we need to know. I don't know. I don't know. We haven't talked about this yet. You know, we're still with the public. But if we have to have another meeting to get more information, we'll do so. So no information, I mean, no decision can be made today because even though I feel like I know something, what I know I haven't been able to share with the rest of the council yet. So that's not a fair thing for them. I wouldn't ask them to make a decision based on things that possibly they're not aware of because I was part of this for a while. So, um, yeah, somebody was in there. I've had people in the past looking up genealogy things. Um, 
But somebody coming in upon a special request to do research, which is, you know, as you know, one of the reasons why that museum was put together is not the same thing as we used to have the doors open, classrooms coming through, Christmas parties, Victorian teas, picnics, flowers. I mean, that was a totally different time that was achieved and it was gorgeous. Um, so I think that, I understand what you're saying, but the he said she thing at this point is almost moot. I mean, it has not been pleasant, but my endeavor today is to get information and go ahead. Because if we have to rehash 25, 30 years, we're never gonna go ahead. So I would just ask you to indulge us in getting as much information, you know, and I know that you understand that, so, uh, and then we can move forward. But there may even be another meeting. And of course, you know, you'll know and you'll come. But yeah, there was somebody in there gathering information for the idea of the presentation that's gonna happen at the library at the end of the month, the 28th, I believe, yeah. at, at our library, the Township Library. So it was part of the presentation that the person wants to put forth. You know, so, you know, we're happy to help get information out about what we consider a historical building or a history of how. So it, it was really that simple. Does that answer? To a degree. Okay. What Mr. McGurr just said was the absolute truth. Totally full report. What you got, that's it. That was a legal document. Mm -hmm. He knows, Ellen McGurr was the president at the time. Right. I was the secretary in 2001 when a gentleman whose name I will not mention walked into the election night with his own ballots and started handing them out to 40 new people that were going to join that night to vote. I think, I think we've achieved all of that. I think we understand. Did say that? Yes. When, uh, 40, 40? Oh, they didn't mention the 40 ballots. All right, well. But I mean, the premise of perhaps things weren't done. Well, and, I'm just saying, you talk about illegal. And does that answer my questions, Evelyn? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I th but I, I do. Mean, I exactly, I know what you're saying. Edie Smith yeah. thought. And I'm familiar with Edie Smith's um, unfortunate situation. Um, and I'm sympathetic. But I need to just have all the information. And I'm not sure that the he said, she said things. You know, what I'm really interested in is finding out what kind of history is so valuable to Howe Township that we should keep this building in good repair. I mean, we have... Just, I mean, I'm going to ask uh, Mrs. Schaefer about something that I saw on the list. I mean, I think there are things here that may be persuasive in the element of history. So, um, Mr. You know, Fabiano, he's the head of the Monmouth County Historical Commission. Uh, if I've you been, can't believe that man, I didn't say no, no, I do believe him. I have spoken with Mr. Fabiano <coughs> in the past. Historical society, society down south. He told me about it a couple of years ago. And he's been very helpful in the yes. past with guidance, so he's, I do appreciate him. He's, he's excellent. Okay. So I'm glad he came, but thank you. I just want you to know, 20 years I've been around, the only one to come back and pay her $10 dues after they said, oh, you got to pay it by June 30th. Well, it was June 26th. Who? Nobody else knew about it. I was the only one because I was at the meeting when the lawyer's walking out. Hello? What are you here for? Oh, you have to pay your dues by June 30th. So I sent him a check because I knew the treasurer wasn't going to go to the post office before June 30th. So he got my check, so I was in. So it's 20 years. And the only one from the 40 people that were kicked out for being members in bad standing. You don't have to tell me anything. I know it. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to come up? Mayor, if I can make a quick statement on this issue, um, I just want to thank you all. As one of the fourth graders who did go through there, um, I, I thank you for your interest. And uh, um, in, history is super important uh, to me, and, and I know some members up here uh, have expressed their uh, concern. And um, um, I could tell you that we, everything we possibly can do, I can do everything we possibly can do. I don't want to speak for the council, but to, uh, to uh, keep this place up, up and running. Thank you again. M Mr. McGill, is that... Mr. Okay. I'm sorry, forgive me. Um, I would love to set up a meeting with you, if you wouldn't mind. Anytime. I would like to talk to you, just to get uh, some additional I'm history. I'm a retired man now. I'm available anytime you want, and I am a reasonable, disinterested third party. I just happens to know. Okay. Um, okay. I will, um, I'll give you my number here, and then you could. Whatever you want. Thank you. We'll just set something up. I'll have to chat with you. Perfect. Thank you. Once again, uh, I just want to, you know, I, I want to say I appreciate 
um, everybody coming in and giving us uh, what I would say is good information. Thank you to the professionals as all who have also helped as well. I've heard for two years about the McKenzie House. I've been to the McKenzie House. Um, there's been discussion, but no true discussion, as um, the deputy mayor has said, at the dais. Um, I think that today, with the historical foundation and him talking about grants, plus the grants that both Barbara as well as um, oh, I forget, Elaine, I believe, Lincoln. said, right, yeah, Elaine, that there were additional grants. I mean, I think who's, that's a great thing. Do we write our own grants, or how does that work? We do write a lot of our own grants. We do uh, contract out for some. Uh, the one thing I did want to mention is, as I think Deputy Mayor uh, had alluded to, I think everyone's on the same page as to what happened in the past. That's what's brought us here to today. Right. It's so the entire governing body can kind of make an educated um, decision. decision as to which direction we're going to go moving forward. I, I just yeah. have one, one last question. I mean, everyone today, we heard Mr. Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Schaefer, Mrs. Taylor, Barbara Dixel, John Fabiano, everyone talked about these grants. Um, I'm under the understanding that if it's not registered, we're not going to receive any grants. So most likely that's Well, correct. those are the questions that I have here. So how long does it take to register? You know, what's the process to register? I mean, we have to take a look at that. And, and did we need John Armada here today to, is he the one that needs to register us? How does that work? No. So I, I, what I think, and I could be absolutely incorrect, but I think the first step is to go to the historical society to see where the Howell Historical Society lays within their framework work. After that, I would assume that you have to set a meeting up to convene mem people who would want to join the Historical Society and start the process anew versus a 20-year-old, mm -hmm. you know, um, the board of directors that might not even be with us still. Mayor, I believe that's a decision you guys as a governing body no, have totally to make. Do, well, we, do we want to form basically a new commission to... Uh, yeah, I think that's. These would are the we have them investigate these grants? Or are you going to have township? Well, uh, handle again, it? these are just questions. As everybody was speaking, like things that were just coming to my head as I'm right. writing them down, but which I want to share. We have to first go back and have all these discussions. So, yes, Barbara. Um, I'd like to just ask a question. So, um, and again, we're, we're new up here, right? So please bear with us, and I may, may sound a little ignorant. But if the township, and Brian, this may be a question for you. If the township owns the property and we're leasing it to, I guess, the, the um, historical society, is that how it works? Yes. It's like we're the landlords and there are tenants. Yes. And they're responsible for the maintenance, which they have defaulted on for, Jim, Correct. how many years? Yes. A lot of years. Lot of so why why would the township put that you know out there with the risk of this happening all over again without having anybody step forward and take responsibility for maintaining this property without putting it on the, the shoulders of the taxpayers? That's what I'm having a really hard time here. No one is saying, okay, I'll do it. I'll take it over. I, I'm, so I'm, I, so I, I'm just I, having a hard time understanding and processing that. And please correct me if I'm wrong. So I'm not sure that I've heard that because I've heard other people. I'm not. I, I, just give me one second, please. I'm sorry. 
in the in previous meetings as well as this meeting, they've been asking to take this over. People here today, it seems to me, they're asking what it is the town want to do with it and can we be the people to help you do that? That's what I'm hearing. Um, if you, I know that, uh, if, please come on up to the mic again. I, it's just, I, I know I left Barbara's slide there and I'm going to get in trouble for that. Okay, thank you. I'll be brief. Don McGarr again. You're absolutely correct. The town owns the property. To answer your question, the town was the one. That, the town is the one that would have to request the historical designation. It has nothing to do with historical society. The town has to do it. And the last thing I'll say to you is, if you get a meeting together, there are enough people that will take this over and run it the way it was run for years, with a sincere belief that the history of Howell Township has to be maintained. It's precious. This is a great historical town, and these people are chomping at the bit to get back into it. All they need is your help. Um, Thank you. I have a question for Mr. Herman regarding, you know, we know the township owns the property, right? What exactly does the lease, the maintenance on the lease entail as far as whoever is going to take step up and take it over? What is their responsibility and what's the township's responsibility? Excuse me, deputy. That's okay. You would have to make a, a lease um, with, a, with that group at that time. Well, I mean, every lease is not the same. So the lease that was previously in existence um, there were certain would responsibilities, yeah. <laughs> which is fair, but I'm just saying there was probably a lease already. I, I and believe, and again, so I you this not knowing about this meeting, but I believe the lease did say that the society would maintain the building. Mr. Herman, do you have that? Yes. So there is a, a lease. In that lease, it does state that we are the landlord. The Howell Historical Society is the tenant. Uh, the Historical Society is required to maintain appropriate liability insurance, which was a million dollars, with Howell Township named as additionally insured. That was required for the, uh, the Historical Society. Also, they're required to provide any uh, maintenance, repairs, improvements, additions, alterations at its own expense, uh, not at the expense of Howell Township. And they have to keep it free and clear of debris and rubbish, mow the grass, vegetation, shrubbery, pay for all of the, the utilities, uh, things of that nature. And as you know, we've kind of taken over pretty much everything, including paying all the utilities, uh, which we just found out on Friday that were $3,000 in arrears on propane. So we shut the heat off on Friday. So I guess ad additional information that would be um, beneficial would be what was the what's the an annual budget that this building would would cost if a new historical society was to assume responsibilities. Um, I think that would be an important document for us to review. Um, I think additionally, this it, it's not just opening the doors. It is also to try and fix whatever's there. So I would hope that you know once and if we move forward with the historical society, that um, we'll do. There will be some fundraising efforts as well to try and you know recoup those dollars to put back. Into yes, and I, I think that I think that the important thing is to get um, again people that are willing to dedicate sure. the time Agreed. that have the passion. Um, the, the amount of grant money that's out there right now uh, would certainly help to um, uh, uh, add to the money that's done with fundraisers and dues and so forth. Um, it is a lot of money. It's a, it's a money pit over there. Um, and I always objected to the town being asked to pay for it. Um, and that was one of the problems with um, you know, the governing people of the historical society is that, you know, you got to have the right people in there. You got to have people doing it for the right reason. Agreed. Okay. Understood. And uh, I, I, I can tell you they're there. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for Thank you, Don. Please come up. Ed Julian, Bridgetown. One of the um, questions that was just raised was oversight. And in the original ordinance, which goes back to 1983, 
Um, it says the Historical Society will report to the township clerk that they will put an annual letter which spells out what they have done and what they intend to do in the coming year and how their finances are. So that when you talk about, okay, who is responsible? Yes, you have a group of people who are willing to work their hearts out, but also it gives the town leverage, which at this point, I would say the town has none. There's, there, it's leverage. Leverage in, if you hold the society, whoever is in charge, to their, to the demand of the original ordinance that says a letter to the township clerk, and that the town has a right to oversee the activities, find the original ordinance and read the first section of it that spells out where the town is a cooperating participant with the management of the historical society to make sure things stay level. And I would say if We've reached this point that has not been happening. That, ha that has been in some manner overlooked and it brings you, leaves you to where you are today. But if you held the feet to the fire, so to speak, okay, and demanded where is the letter? Where's the letter for 2019? Where's the letter for 2018? That would give the town council, regardless of who's sitting, some sort of insight and input into the management of the historical society. I rest my case. Thank you. Mayor, Thank you. if I may, I believe yes. it's well established that they've defaulted on their lease agreement with the town. So um, although a legal question, I think we're pretty well situated there. Now, what I'll do uh, for the benefit of council is I'll take a look at some of this and sort of put together a memo about where everything stands and what next steps might be, regardless of what decisions ultimately made. So that would be fabulous. Thank you. So, Joe, if if and again legally, right? Um, maybe I guess a letter of intent or um, benchmarks requirements that we require from them to report back to the township you know, quarterly, yearly, whatever, making sure that they're fulfilling their part of the um, lease. And then if not, it comes back to the township to decide what happens. Is that something that we can? Sure, so what I'll do is I'll take a look at the, the status of the current historical society and what we might be able to do with regard to that versus, you know, the uh, ability to sort of put in a new organization. So just sort of across the board kind of options for the, for the council going forward. Okay. There's always, you know, contingencies in leases that allows the owner. I understand, but I think it's our part to make sure that they're, you know, we. I don't think we did, not we, I mean, you know, whoever didn't really, as she said, hold their feet to the fire. So 20 years go by and, you know, they defaulted on their lease, their maintenance, and we're here. If we would have did our part, no offense to anybody who was here prior to us, you know, we didn't hold their feet to the fire. We didn't, you know, require them to keep up with their part. And now here we are. So I would like to believe that we can come to whoever wants to raise their hand and take over. You know, we have to hold them to a certain standard. And if not, then it comes back to the township and we decide where to go from there. Because I hope, you know, with fundraising and donors and stuff like that, you don't get in over your head and we make this big agreement. And then, you know, it's, it is 2019. It's not 20 years ago. And, and, I, and I'm not quite sure where, um, you know, where the money will come from, and I don't know what it cost to, to run the McKenzie House when it was opened. No idea. Um, and then forget, you know, the propane and, and the electric and the fire alarms and the maintaining of the property. Whatever cost that is, I hope that whoever does step up and can, you know, fulfill that obligation, if, if even with a grant. 
My blood pressure's up. Hi, I think I, I think I just heard. Uh, Name and address. Uh, Elaine Taylor, <laughs> Maxim Southern Road, Howell. I think I just heard uh, Mr. Herman say that they turned the propane off and it's going to be 10 degrees tonight. So I'm really concerned that um, that the pipes will freeze because there is a bathroom in there. Work. So I'll be happy to give money right now for the cause to put the propane back on because it's really important. Ms. That Taylor, really important. all of the water was shut off and drained from the building. I think we're a little better than that. <laughs> oh. Wait a minute. How much were you talking about giving? <laughs> doesn't get us out of our ears. Amerigas won't even talk to us unless we write him a check for $3,200 today. All right, so. all right, everybody, open up your pocketbooks. <laughs> Thank you. Is there anybody else? Oh, if you, if you came up, please don't come back and yell. I didn't say don't come up. I said don't come up and yell, that's all. <laughs> We're asking for new information, Sandy. Yeah. Thank you. Name, name, name. It's all Road Farmingdale. To say that we violated the lease, it was my understanding for Virginia Woolley, who created the Historical Society, that they were responsible for the interior of the building and they picked the colors and did the wallpaper, mm -hmm. got the artifacts, whatever. So we always had a liaison from the historical to the township, an unnamed person, and the township would <laughs> cut the grass. They would go in and fix the furnace when it went off. If the alarm went off at night, the township went and turned it off. So to say that we were responsible for putting on painting the whole building, putting on a new roof. Now I happen to know, and Lou can probably collaborate, they put $40,000 in the budget, I'm gonna say 12, 15 years ago, they, to paint we did. The, township, the township, to paint the Mackenzie. Now, if the town wasn't responsible or felt that they were responsible, why did they put $40,000 in the budget? So I called up George Gravatt, who at the time was Buildings and Grounds and DPW, and I said, how much of that money did you use? He said, we put on a new roof. I said, how much was the new roof? He said, $11,000. But the new roof, it was a cedar shake, and the guy who did it was uh, Ira McGill. He was a historic reservation, preservationist. He said that that cedar shake should have lasted 25 years. So now we got a new cedar shake, and the problem with this one was what the problem with before was the algae. They didn't remove the algae from the roof, so it looked like nasty, okay? And they got a bucket truck and go up and trim the trees. So why didn't DPW go up and spray? So to say that we violated the lease, that's not true, because the DPW and Buildings and Grounds was in there consistently. If they saw that there was something wrong, they could have brought a report to the manager or the administrator at the time and said, hey, this is a problem. But in the meantime, we still had at least two liaisons that I know of, and they were all, both trustees. So, and Bruce Davis, the clerk, assistant manager at some times, he, he was collaborating <laughs> with these two people. If we needed the grass cut because we're having a picnic, DPW was there cutting the grass. So to say that we violated the lease is an insult. And that's all I have to say, and that's new information. Thank you. Mayor and Council, if I may, um, the $40,000 that uh, Mrs. Sully is referring to, uh, according to my records, uh, the governing body in 2013 appropriated said $40,000 for improvements to the McKenzie Museum. Uh, at that time, uh, work was done for painting of the exterior, uh, repair uh, to the roof, as well as uh, sealing, sealing, S-E-A-L, not sealing, um, C-E-I-L. Uh, the total of the uh, project, uh, which was completed in June of uh, 2015, was uh, $33,350, and with the county grant that we received for $4,500, uh, the township's uh, net expenditure for that was uh, $28,850. Thank you. That's about the same time period. Uh, I do, if I might, um, with consideration to the last lease that was in effect, that the perf that I'm hearing the lease was is broken. Have we ex <clears throat> have we advised the uh, leasees that the lease was broken and that that business venture has been severed 
from uh, the Howell Township, from Howell Township in its entirety. We Did don't have any current contact information for, we're still trying to track down who is the historical society. Who should we be notifying? That's uh -huh. The only people that I could direct you to, I believe, are the three that I uh, uh, shared with Mr. Clark. Sure. But, um, and that's why we invited yeah. them tonight. Yeah. To do wouldn't, wouldn't there be a documentation at the Historical Society, whether it's in from Monmouth or Trenton, that every time a mem aren't you supposed to update membership? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, as a 501c3, you're supposed to document all that kind of stuff, aren't you? I mean, yes. Apparently, the 501c3 paperwork has not been kept up over the years either. It's my understanding that it's uh, not. Uh, been properly done and in that case one person did tell me that um, that that 501 um, C3. C3 document is no longer uh, being upheld does the governing body wish them to be notified that they're in default but but wait I just have another question though then then were there articles of incorporation for it were they disbanded I have some documentation that was given me from a while back, and I've got to look through it again, but apparently their 501c3 status lapsed, and then it looks so in like essence, it's, it's a defunct at some point last year it was reinstated, but I've got to take a look and see when that was because it may have lapsed again at this point. So there's uh, there seems to be a lot of moving parts with the historical society. Um, and I'll try and put them all in a chronology Thank if I you. can, and yeah, so yeah. that might be helpful. And again, like uh, Brian had asked, if the governing body would like us to declare them in default, I'll certainly draft a letter to that effect, but maybe I'll get the memo done first, and then we can all revisit the issue. Thank you. I think we should have a parameter, at least in terms of the lease, if it's in effect or not in effect. Uh, again, you know, so that we're not in limbo, well, at least on that point. You're talking about, right? You're talking about the lease. You're talking about the Articles of Incorporation. You're right. talking about... But the lease, I think we could deal with because I think that it's been decided that the lease is uh, not be, is in def, uh, default, correct? Was that the uh, legal that's, opinion? Well, that would be my opinion. I'm not saying that's a legal opinion, oh. <laughs> but certainly it would appear they have not kept up with the maintenance of the building in any way, shape, or form. Can we they certainly this? haven't, have oh, not in the last year and a half. Can we declare them in default? Them, who are they, whoever them may be, once you find that out? I will have to take a look at the issue, um, and I will send something around separately to council uh, and give you my impression on it. And just for the record, my initial impression is that they are likely to be in default at this point due to a variety of issues, uh, you know, failure to maintain the premises. It looks like the... Uh, Status of the corporation may have lapsed. My biggest concern is the fact that there does not appear to be any insurance on the property at this time, which creates massive liability issues. So I think it's safe to say that, uh, I think it's safe to say they're probably in default at this point. Thank you. Interesting. Sure. If you... Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, but I. <clears throat> otherwise, they they yell and scream, and I get hit. They've hit me with. They've thrown this at me. That's not good. <laughs> um, okay, um, is it too late to put in the township bu budget to put up an outhouse there? I'm a little concerned about the fact that the water's been shut off and all that stuff. Somebody goes there to do some research, and they have to use the bathroom. What do they do? Well, well there, I think that um, Deputy Mayor O'Donnell is the person that's bringing them. So I guess before you bring someone, go home to Starbucks. <laughs> I'm only sure their bathroom needs are met. If I need to, I will take them to the appropriate Maybe location. Maybe there's an old chamber mm. pot upstairs or something. <laughs> well, actually, there well, is, Kathy. <laughs> Could be. I mean, you got to go. you got to go. <laughs> Everyone, thank you very much for your time and patience. I appreciate uh, you sharing all this information. I look forward to gathering a little bit more and then us having a discussion. At this point, I would, 
I think it's time to close the meeting because we have council in about 15 minutes. <laughs> so what I'm going to say is where is the... There is no meeting date set for an ad additional meeting for this. So if there is one, you'll see that um, in a notice. At this point, I would like to entertain a motion to end the discussion in the meeting. So move, Mayor. Uh, second. I'll second. Roll call, Mr. Bonovich? Yes. Ms. Richmond? Yes. Mr. Russo? Yes. Deputy Mayor O'Donnell? Yes. Mayor Berger? Yes, ma'am. And thank you, everybody.